Hey, what's up guys and welcome to my Master's High Zodiac Guide. In this video, I'll be covering requirements, new attacks, attack patterns, and other stuff that may help you with this fight. If you guys have any questions, then feel free to ask them in the comments down below, alright? Alright, so first off, let's cover requirements. The main team that you see in pubs is the 4 DPS comp, which includes Fleur, Yachio, and two Gala Yudins. Fleur should be equipped with at least a max High Dragon Tier 1 weapon. The Dragon should be Cupid, and then the two prints should be Twinfold Bonds, and then the second print is kind of flexible. I've seen Sisters Day Out, Stellar Show, and Lemons Champion all work in pubs, but I personally would recommend that you go with Sisters Day Out. It's going to help Fleur deal more damage in the beginning, and that's going to help push High Zodiac into overdrive faster. And then of course, the 4 strike damage ability is going to help with breaking High Zodiac in time before the first stat goes off. Yachio should also have a max tier 1 weapon. Tier 2 isn't necessary, but high dragon tier 2 weapons on Fleur and Yachio definitely makes the fight go more smoothly. The dragon is also Cupid, and the two prints for her are Resounding Rendition and Stellar Show. Now, both the Gala Yudins should be running the same equipment aside from the dragon. They both need at least a max unbinded high dragon tier 1 sword. The dragon of choice is Cupid, but one Cupid and one Siren can work as well. And then lastly, the two prints for him are the Chocolatiers and Sisters Day Out. Now, as far as stat requirement goes, all four of these melee DPSers should have at least 2,424 HP in order to survive the initial blast. This is taking into account the 30% defense that is granted from both of the Gala Yudin skill to effect. Alright, so those were the requirements. Now let us move on to High Zodiac's new attacks. I'm assuming that you guys understand what most of its attack does because I'm assuming you guys have already been expert High Zodiac, so that's why I'm only going to cover the new attacks. And for High Zodiac, there's not many, however some of his old attacks do function differently and I'll be sure to cover those in this segment. The first new move are these two purple circles that home in on the targeted characters. These circles will apply a defense down effect on any character that is standing on top of them. I'm not sure how the targeting works on these circles, but it shouldn't really matter. For this 4 DPS strategy, you can basically just ignore them, they don't really affect the fight at all. There's also this unavoidable small explosion that occurs a couple times during the fight and also inflicts a defense down. These also don't affect the match too much as well. Next is the prison or cage attack. Expert Zodiac does his move and in Masters it does the same thing but with a new additional effect. The cage targets the two characters that are furthest away from High Zodiac. In addition to this, the imprisoned characters will get their SP sapped from all of their skills. I'll explain how to deal with this part optimally in the attack pattern section of this video later on. The breath attack is also a move that you should be familiar with from expert mode. In expert, the breath always targeted the closest character. In masters, the breath has a 50-50 chance on targeting either the closest or for this player. This means that the whole team has to be grouped up in the same area to bait the breaths. Curse Realm and Curse Fields are the long rectangular attacks, also known as the stack. Just like the breath attack, the stack targeted the closest character in Expert, but in Masters, it has a 50 50 chance on either targeting the closest or for this player. That's all for the new attacks, so now let's get into the most important segment, which is the attack pattern. I've gone ahead and listed the pattern for the whole fight right here. I'm going to commentate through some gameplay so that you guys understand all the small important details that you need to know in terms of positioning and how to handle certain attacks. Positioning is very important in this fight so make sure that you pay attention to this part and understand what's going on, alright? In the beginning of the fight, standard opener for Yudin, it's skill 2 followed by skill 1. Now in Expert High Zodiac, Yudin usually transforms into Cupid immediately after using skill 1, but for Masters, he can't do that or else Cupid's Dragon Time will run out before the dash later on. However, if one of the Yudin is running Siren, then both Yudins can immediately transform after using skill 1 because Siren's ability extends Dragon Time by a few seconds. With double Cupid Yudins, they have to delay the transformation so their opener becomes skill 2 into skill 1, skill 3, then transform. During all this, Fleur should bait the breath to the left or top side of the map and then bait Zodiac's mini dash towards the bottom right side of the map. Then, two purple circles will start targeting two players. You can just ignore them since they don't really affect the fight at all. Right here, Zodiac will do two poison spits. The first spit targets the closest character, which should be Fleur. This first spit should be baited towards the right side. The second spit targets the second closest player, which should be Yachio, and that spit should be baited towards the top. Baiting those Venoms in those spots will allow Fleur and Yachio to safely follow Zodiac after he does his purple dash. 
Right here, everyone just uses their skills and Zodiac should be in overdrive during this part. Everyone needs to focus on trying to break that overdrive bar using 4 strike combos. When Umbra Chaser appears, make sure to spread out before they fill in order to avoid getting multiple stacks of purple flames, souls, whatever you want to call them. The more purple flames that are on your character, then the more damage Zodiac will deal with certain attacks. After the chasers will be the first stack and prison combo. The prison targets the two players that are furthest away from Zodiac and like I said earlier, the prison will sap SP. Fleur is the one character that should not get their SP sap so she has to make sure that she's hugging Zodiac at all times. Yachio and one Galiudin should be the ones baiting the prisons while Fleur and the other Galiudin should be focusing on trying to break high Zodiac. Do note that if your team has really good damage and your timing is good, you can actually break Zodiac right as soon as the prison appears and none of your characters will get their SP sapped. This is the first spectral flame phase with the four candles. Whenever this phase comes up, your team should always destroy the candles on the bottom and bottom right side. After destroying the candles, your team should group up on the right side. This is when Zodiac will do from the player's point of view his right to left breath attack. This breath attack has a 50-50 chance on either targeting the closest or for this player so make sure that the whole team is on the same side. Once you dodge that, soon afterwards Zodiac is going to do a tail slam. Make sure that you either iframe it or roll away. Make sure to watch out for it because the tail slams do have a pretty big hitbox. Now this is where teams usually mess up, is the 4 dash phase. The 4 dashes that Zodiac does, the way it targets is by proximity and I'm going to explain how it works. So using the video as an example, you can see that Fleur and I are hugging Zodiac. Fleur and I are first and second closest, we can't really tell who's closest because uh, we're stacked on top of each other. And then Yachio is the third closest while the other unit is the furthest away. Zodiac's first dash will target the closest, second dash targets second closest, third dash targets third closest, and the fourth dash targets the furthest player. Because Fleur and I are stacked on top of each other and we can't really tell who's first and second closest, so in order to avoid any confusion during this dash phase, we both have to make an attempt to bait the first two dashes. It's pretty clear that the third and fourth dash targets Yachio and the other Yudin respectively, so Fleur and I can freely attack Zodiac during those last two dashes. Keep in mind to always make sure to attack Zodiac from behind because he has some pretty big hitboxes on the side of his body whenever he dashes and drifts. Another tip for you guys is that if your team is bunched up together and you can't tell which dash targets who, then the whole team should make the attempt to bait every single dash to avoid any ambiguity. Stack number 2 comes up right after the 4th dash phase and just like any other stack, it has a 50-50 chance on either targeting the closest or furthest player. There's two ways to handle this part. The first method is to have Fleur hug Zodiac. Yachio stand the furthest away and the two Galiudins in the middle. This way the stack will target either Fleur or Yachio and both of them should have their dragons ready at this point. Once one of them baits the stack, the two Yudins should run away in order to bait the prisons. Whoever took the stack needs to then run away, away from the team, transform into Cupid and use the dragon skill right before the stack explodes. Now the other method is pretty simple, you just 4 man tank the stack and then heal up with Cupid afterwards. Keep in mind that this stack is always horizontal I believe so make sure that you line up horizontally. Spectral Flame number 2 is up next. Destroy the two candles on the bottom and right side of the map just like the first time. There's going to be Umbra Chasers during this phase so your team needs to spread out but make sure to stay near the left side of the map. Zodiac is going to do a breath attack again, but this time the direction goes from left to right from the player's point of view. Remember that the breath targets the closest or furthest player so the team needs to stay grouped up. Ok so here's one of the more annoying parts of the fight. There's a lot of RNG going on right here. Zodiac is going to either do a horizontal or vertical stack which again has a 50-50 chance on either targeting the closest or furthest player. 
Whoever has Dragon available, one of them needs to hug Zodiac while the other one should position themselves furthest away. The other two, which includes the players that have used up their Dragon form from earlier, needs to stay in the middle. Whoever gets the stack needs to run away from the team, transform into a dragon, and use the dragon skill right before the stack explodes. Okay, so most of my runs ends right here, but let's say your team doesn't have enough damage and have to continue fighting. Well then, Zodiac will do a mini dash into two poison spits. After the second spit, he will do a single purple dash targeting the furthest player, followed by a tail slam. Your team can deal a lot of free damage during the sequence, so make sure that your rotations are on point here. Spectral Flame number 3 is next and this time your team needs to destroy the bottom, bottom right, and top candles. For this phase, Zodiac will either do a stack and upper chaser combo or left to right breath or right to left breath. If you see any kind of stack up here, then you don't have to worry about him doing any kind of breath attack. If not, then you'll have to destroy the 3 candles, the bottom, the right, and the top, group up north of Zodiac in order to bait the breath north, then dodge it by rolling towards the bottom. Now he should be dead at this point and I don't have any footage to show the rest of his attack patterns but the rest of his attacks you can find it on this list. All that's left is a mini dash, two poison spits, purple dash, and then tail slam. And that's about it for Master's High Zodiac, it's a pretty easy fight. As for the rest of the video, it's just some gameplay of some of my clears. You can find one with double Cupid Yudins and another one using Siren. Again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. But that's gonna be it for me, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Hope this video is helpful, enjoy the rest of the gameplay, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.